I had some questions on challenge set 24 <clears throat> about inverse functions. I'm going to start here with uh, question number six. And what question number six is telling us is basically the definition of an inverse function. If you have a function f of x, like we have down here, f of x equal to x squared, um, then you put a number into this function, x, and you square it, and that's the output. Well, an inverse function takes that output and then gives us back the, the, the input that, that leads to that output. And so we're asked here in part A to graph the function f of x equal to x squared and use at least five points. Um, so let me just do that real quick and, and I'm going to do that by making a table. And uh, here's my table. And I was told I need six points, and you probably know the the most interesting, I'm sorry, it said five points. Here are the five inputs that I'm going to use. And when I square each of these, I get the outputs like this. So that's my table of values. And then I'm going to make a graph over here of this function. And labeling my axes, scaling, one, two, three, four, five. This is a very familiar graph. It's just uh, the parent function, really, of the quadratic function family. Now, when I have those, three, those five points plotted, I'm going to draw a smooth curve through them, and so I'm not going to connect them with line segments so that they're corners, and uh, instead it's going to be a smooth curve through the points, and that's what I mean when I say a smooth curve. We're not drawing little line segments between these points, but rather connecting them with a smooth curve in order to actually go through uh, all of the points where... Uh, in between 0 and 1, when x is in between 0 and 1, and we square those numbers, we're going to get a shape like that. So um, the question in letter A is also asking us, is, is f of x a function, and how do we know? Well, f of x is a function, and you know why. Um, because it passes the vertical line test. Passes the vertical line test. Now, um, in part B, uh, it says for each point on the graph of f of x, here I'll put it right here for you, for each point <clears throat> on the graph of f of x, switch the x and the y values and plot these new points and then connect them with a smooth curve to reveal the graph of the inverse of f of x. So let me do that. I'm going to take my table, and for part B, I'm going to just switch the inputs and the outputs. So uh, before I label those, I'm just going to put the 4, 1, 0, 1, 4 over here, and a 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2 over here. So this becomes our inputs, um, which are the outputs of the original function, and then here we say the inverse of f of x. And if we plot those points, and I'll do that on the same set of axes, let me go ahead and differentiate my graphs here a little bit. I'm going to use my blue colored pencil to color this guy in. I like to draw my graphs with regular pencil, get them perfect, and then add the color. And that's what I'm going to do here too when I plot these values right here. Uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and 4, 2, 4, negative 2. And I'll draw a smooth curve through those points. Again, I'm not connecting them with line segments. I'm actually drawing the parabola. And that looks pretty good, so I'm going to color that in with green. All right. Maybe add a little green over here, a little blue up here. So, it uh, in in the question it says um, 
uh, reveal the graph of the inverse of x, and that's what that's what we have here. Um, and now we're asked to draw the dotted line y equals x to verify that. Let's just do that real quick, and then we'll get back to it. Here's a dotted line, y equals x. And notice that uh, it's just asking us to verify that the inverse function, the green function as I've drawn it here, is really just a reflection of the blue function across this, this uh, line. And um, that's, uh, that's interesting particularly because the way we got the green function was just by switching the x and the y values. So it makes sense that any point that's actually on this dotted line, and we have two of them, um, they wouldn't change because their x and their y values are the same. So when you switch them, you end up with the same point you started with. So that's uh, there's just a lot of great and interesting uh, relationships here between the graph of f of x, the graph of the inverse of f of x, and this line y equals equals x